The purpose of this video is to show you how to take an honor lock proctored exam in my math lab. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to log into Canvas and select our class. On the left, find the menu. If the menu is not visible, click this little button here and make it visible, and then select honor lock. Find the exam that you want to take. The one you're going to be looking for first says practice taking a test required and near the right click the launch button. It's going to open up a window with two tabs. The honor lock tab, which is this teeny tiny tab with a shield with a check mark, and the honor lock window that you were previously working in in Canvas. So in this honor lock tab, again the one with the shield with the question mark, you're going to follow all the on-screen instructions. So first read the honor lock instructions, then click launch proctoring. The screen adjusts to 90% of your desktop or last laptop monitor size. Next, turn your attention to the upper left corner and follow its instructions. The first thing they want you to do is to take a photo, so position your face inside the little face ring, look at the camera, smile, click take photo. Okay, next thing is you're going to be prompted for an ID. I have that turned off for this video example. Uh, because it actually scans your ID and it compares the name on the ID to the name of the student. And if I were to do that, I don't have an ID on it that says test student and it wouldn't let me proceed. So I've turned that off just for the purposes of this video. All right, next is the room scan. So you're going to click begin room scan and then you're going to pick up your laptop or your uh, webcam and you are going to show your entire room. You need to show that there is uh, no inappropriate stuff anywhere in your room. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly here. Let me move my recording camera over to this area so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, here goes my room scan. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show that I have no inappropriate materials on my desk. The only thing I have here on my desk are some uh, pens, a pencil, and my scientific calculator. Next thing I'm going to do is a 360 degree scan. I'm going to spin all the way around my room here, showing that I don't have any inappropriate stuff that I could use while I'm taking the test. There's no math on the wall, there's nothing in the way. There's my room scan. Yeah, the room scan is the hardest part. If you can just get through the room scan, the rest is much, much easier. And I'll tell you that the room scan is a lot easier if you disconnect all of the cords that are connected to your laptop before you try and pick it up and move it all over the place. All right, so this is the longest room scan in the history of room scans. This back on its holder here. All right, so after you're done with the room scan, then click I'm done. Okay, next, it's gonna show you the room scan so you can look at it and see if it's good enough. And mine's good enough, so I'm gonna say yes, submit. Then you're gonna click launch screen recording. You can extend the size of this window if needed. Pick the window that you plan on sharing, which is this window right here, and click Share. Okay, now read the instructions from your professor right here. And when you've done that, open up a new tab by clicking the little plus button and navigate to My Math Lab. Sign into My Math Lab. Click Assignments on the left and find the test that you want to take. So for me, it's this one, Practice Taking a Test, Required. And when you get to the screen where it asks you for a password, go back to the Honor Lock screen and click the Insert Password button. Honor Lock puts the password in for you. Then you come back to here and click Submit. This submits the password to my math lab. 
and you're now ready to start your test. So it says there's only 10 minutes to complete this test. I'm gonna click start test and here we go. All right, question one, you are taking a proctored online test. If you have not already done so, show your approved calculator to the camera. All right, here is my approved calculator. It is a TI 30 XS MultiView calculator. And you can see which calculator I'm using. It's a scientific calculator, it cannot do any graphing. All right, scrap paper, show your scrap paper. All right, so here's my two pieces of scrap paper. There's number one, I'm showing the entire page from top to bottom, both sides. There's no writing on it. Number two, entire page, top to bottom, both sides, there's no writing on it. Okay, the rest of the instructions I think I did. Uh, position your face so it's visible to the camera, yes. Photo ID, yes. Room scan 360 degrees, yes. Disconnect dis additional displays, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna click A, I'm ready to move on. Now, this is the interesting part. I uh, mentioned this in the instructions. So now I wanna click the little right arrow in the bottom right to go on to the next question, but I can't see it. So I have to click this little minus button here, which is a gray button with a blue minus symbol on it. That will make this little piece at the bottom go away. And then when I hover my mouse near the bottom, it reveals the little button so I can move on to the next question. All right, now I'm gonna enter uh, my answer for this question. So this is a find the errors type problem. Okay, student's problem. Find the intercepts of the graph of the following equation. Simplify, express these intercepts as an ordered pair point. Okay, and then part B says graph the equation. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the student's work in determining the intercepts. Uh, part A, to find x intercepts, set y equal to zero and solve. Okay, they replace y with zero, simplify. X is four, four is zero, that looks fine. Find the y intercepts, set x to zero. Okay, x has been replaced with zero. 28 over eight. GCF is four, 28 divided by four is seven. Eight divided by four is two, seven over two, that looks fine. Final answer is four comma zero and zero comma seven halves. All right, everything the student wrote looks great. The only thing they didn't do is part B, graph the equation. So I would say the student's final answer is not correct. And then I would say the student The student's error was not answering part B of the question. All right, and then I move on to the next question. All right, fill in the blank. Four plus five times six minus three. Okay, order of operations says I do five times six first, which is 30 and then add, subtract from left to right. So four plus 30 is 34, minus three is 31, I think. Four, 34, 31. All right, next question. The least common multiple of 12 and 18 is six. False. The least common multiple of 12 and 18 is 36. The greatest common factor of 12 and 18 is six. Tricky. Next question. Okay, another find the errors question. Okay, so let's see here. Write the standard form of the equation of the circle with radius and center provided. Radius is three, center is three, negative one. Okay, so the standard form of a circle is blah. There is a mistake. This should be plus and not subtract. Plugging in, okay, the H was replaced by the three. The K was replaced with a negative one. Subtracting a negative is adding. Oh, they caught their mistake. They turned that minus into a plus. And still, that's a mistake. There's a minus there that should be plus. There's a minus there that should be plus. Okay, so that's interesting. So that means that the answer is correct, but the solution is not. Oh, all right, let's write that. So the student's final answer is correct. The student's error
was in the standard form of a circle formula. It had a subtract sign instead of an add sign between the parentheses. Okay, and I'm not sure if I did both sentences for the previous find the errors problem. Whenever you do a find the errors problem, your first sentence needs to be the student's final answer is correct or the student's final answer is not correct. Your second sentence needs to say that the solution is completely correct if it is, or if it's not, state any errors. All right, so there we go. I've done that now, and I move on to the next question. All right, approximate the given number rounded and truncated to three decimal places. Sorry, 4.6376 rounded to three decimal places. That'd be 4.638. But truncated means you just lop off the rest. So 4.637 and then drop off the 6 completely. Pay no attention to its value, just leave it off. All right, and I'd love to click the move on to the next question button, but there are no more questions. So I click submit test. Okay, so my test has been submitted. So right now it says my score is a 60.08, but I'm not going to let that panic me. Uh, the 08 part came from question number one. The 60 part came from getting questions three, four, and five right, worth 20 points each. The other two are currently a little yellow uh, zero here and here. That just means that that was an essay question that has to be reviewed by the instructor. And when the instructor reads that question and inserts a grade, then the grade for the test will be adjusted. So assuming I got questions two and five right, my score on this will be 100%. All right, so if I want to, I can review the test, take a look at every question that I did. Again, I have to use the little minus sign here to get this menu out of the way. I can look at all the questions and the answers. And when I'm done with that, in the upper right-hand corner, I can click Close. When I do, it closes the uh, tiny, tiny tab, bringing me back to the Canvas tab. And it says, my proctoring session has been submitted Uninstall Honor Lock. I don't want to do that. I know I have more tests to take this semester in this class, so I'll just hit the little X to get rid of that. And it shows my exam has been submitted, and I am 100% done. So now I can close this window, and I am done taking my test. All right, I hope this video was helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions.